everybody, so we've been playing around with this and there's a couple of things I want to point out and a couple of things I'm going to do with it. Now, in order to generate with this, there's quite a few things we could do actually. One is the straightforward electromagnetic induction, so we put a magnet on there, put a coil near to it and it's going to generate and that's what I'm going to do. The other thing is a lot of people have been suggesting is um, Luke's Teng generator. If he gets it to bash the Teng generator, we should be able to do with that. Guess what Luke is working on? He's going to be doing the Teng generation and it will be on his channel in the next day or so. I can't remember when exactly, but if you skip over to Luke's channel and the link is in the description, then in a couple of days you'll see that he's put the Teng generator up using this strange engine. There's also another thing we could do because of course this diaphragm it goes up and down. That's varying a distance. If we had a fixed plate here, the diaphragm would vary that distance. And what we've got is a variable capacitor. Now, variable capacitors are brilliant for uh, electron pumps. We could actually generate using variable capacitance with the strange engine. And the other thing we could do, of course, is use it as an electrostatic generator. So we could use electrostatic induction. And here I'm thinking about something like the Bennett's doubler, for instance. We might be able to do something like that. In fact, we should be able to do something like that relatively easily. So there's quite a lot of choices about the way that we could actually generate from this. And Luke and I have um, divided it up between us and we're going to do some of those generation methods. Now, the first one I'm choosing is a straightforward EM generation that we're all going to understand. It's one of the ones get a magnet, waggle it in a coil, and you're going to generate. But we're not going to use this. This is actually a bit of a demonstration model. It's, it's so that we understand what the sections are. Because we've got the hot section right here, we've got our thermal block right here, and then we've got the cold section right here. This really wants to get rid of the heat. This wants to input the heat. So the sections are really noticeable in something like this. You can see them, but you don't have to actually have it like this. As I said in the first video, you can shrink this whole thing down to one container if you wished. I'm going to shrink it down to two containers. So I quite like that ceramic idea. So I've got myself a toothbrush holder. You'll notice it's pink. That's just to prove to you that I'm in touch with my feminine side. So we've got a nice pink holder. Of course, I've drilled holes in the bottle bottom just like we did with the cup and I'm going to fill that full of gravel. There it is, this is my aquarium gravel with nothing special about it apart from its size which is two to three millimeters. The other thing I've got is a tuna tin. So we're going to put the tuna tin on the bottom there. Tape it because I'm not sure it's going to work and if, once I'm sure it's going to work I'll JB weld it so it becomes permanent. Then obviously Fill it with gravel and our balloon diaphragm on top and then a couple of magnets, some N42 stuck on top of that. So that will be the strange engine in two compartments instead of three. Although, like I say, you could take this down to one compartment if you wished. But we're going to use two instead of three. And then we're going to do our normal electromagnetic induction generation with it. So let's get on with that. Okay, so that's it built. Now what we've got to do is get it to generate something. And to have a look at that, what I've got here is a coil. And this coil is from a microwave turntable. So it's a lots of thin wire. So we can expect quite a high voltage and quite a low ampage out of it. It's going to be AC because we've got a magnet here that's going to travel up and down in that coil, creating a reversing magnetic field. So I'm going to put it onto this LED panel. This LED panel has a turn on voltage of somewhere around about 20 volts. So if we can turn that on, it's going to be at least 20 volts. Otherwise, this is not going to light. Now, you can expect a few milliamps out of it, sort of 10, 15 milliamps or something like that. So not a huge amount, but we should be on a challenge to do that, but we stand a chance using this coil with this magnet arrangement. So let's put that together and see how we do. <laughs> okay, so 24 volts easily unloaded. I'm going to put this onto this LED panel, turn on voltage of this panel, I think. It's about 20 volts or so. It won't draw a huge amount of milliamps, but we should get it to light.
So still a bit lashed together, but people have been wondering if it can generate, and obviously it can generate. So this magnets on the diaphragm will generate a considerable amount whilst under load. Now, not under load, the peak voltage I got was 51, but I showed you 24, say so 51, you'll have to believe me, but it does actually generate, and we've seen that. Now, it is an ongoing design. I'm quite liking the compactness of this particular design, Waiting for some bits to hear because I want to make something more permanent than me waggling a coil around some magnets. But I hope you enjoyed the demonstration that it will in fact generate. And of course we could put this on the rocket stove as well as anything else. So keep an eye out for the electrostatic induction and keep an eye out for where we're going to be using the variable capacitance for making it an electron pump. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.